Hiya. So we're going to finish up this section uh, by just talking about combinations um, and also subsets. Um, so last time we talked about sequences, orderings, and permutations. Um, and notice how everything there were ordered sets, right? So everything was ordered in some way. So now the question becomes, well, remember how when we were talking about this heads and how to like um, rolling the dice, uh, rolling, flipping the coin three times, um, we might not care about the order, right? And so the question is, well, what happens if the order genuinely doesn't matter, where um, one, two, three, and three, two, one are literally the same thing? Well, in this case, what we're going to want to figure out is how many of these things exist. Um, and these are called combinations. Uh, so basically, here we're not caring about the order. We're saying A, B, and B, A are the same thing. So basically, a combination of K elements out of an N element set. So what we're doing is we're going to look at all possible orderings, right? We have K elements. So I'll take K, an ordering of K elements of uh, n elements. And then what I want to do is for each of these elements, I want to make all the permutations, all the reshufflings be equivalent. So what I really want to do is I want to take everything, all the orderings, divide by the permutations, and that'll give me the combinations. Um, so if you think about this, what I'm saying is take the orderings, divide by the permutations. So we have n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial. So some of you have probably seen this um, equation before. This is called the choice function. So here we denote this by n choose k. So I already have this in my notes here. Um, I'll highlight it um, since I don't think you can see my thingy, my mouse. Um, and we denote it by n choose k. Uh, and so the reason why there's two different ways of calling this, we can either call it the choice function, and this is coming from the terminology n choose k, right? This is how we read it out loud. Uh, but that's from a combinatorial perspective. Um, a lot of times this is called the binomial coefficient, which is where it was kind of, um, the, where it's used a lot. Uh, and this is actually coming from, so here on the left-hand side, um, I'm going to rewrite this down here. Uh, so if we have x plus y to the n, uh, this is just going to be equal to this. And the coefficient here is the binomial, so by, this is the binomial, binomial coefficient. And this is where this term binomial coefficient is coming from normally. But it turns out for us, um, it this cho choice function makes a lot more sense. Because what I'm saying is I have n elements and I choose three of them. I don't care about the order. I just am choosing three. Um, and so let's look at an example on kind of how this works and where this term is coming from. So example 3.4, uh, I have this set here, tree, fern, sprig, and grass. Um, spring is coming. So, well, okay, all of you probably think spring is here. I'm not a spring person. I am a summer person. So for me, this is cold. Today was zero degrees. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, well, I guess right now it's zero. It, it should be like 10 degrees today. Even 10 degrees is cold. Anyway, side point. Um, so say I have my set S here. So here I know automatically that N is equal to four, right? And I'm going to be asking combinations of three elements. So what I want to think is four choose three. So four choose three, um, right? Four choose three is equal to four factorial over three factorial um, times one factorial. And this is gonna be equal to four, right? So this is just four times three times two times one over three times two times one times one. These all cancel and we're just left with four. So I should end up with four elements. Uh, and we can kind of actually see this here. Um, for some reason, I didn't hide these. Um, but we end up having the four different ways I can choose three elements out of four. So I have tree, fern, sprig, tree, fern, grass, tree, sprig, grass, and fern, sprig, grass. So I have the, three diff uh, the four different options, and that's it. So this is how we get combinations. So another way to look at so combinations is one way to look at sets. Another way to look at sets 
is through subsets. So the next part um, is going to be looking at subsets and that'll be the last thing we kind of cover today. Um, was that, I just realized my camera was probably on part of this the whole time, sorry. Um, I need to double check these things. Uh, so there you go. Uh, you can kind of see this example. I'll stop here so you can actually look at this. Uh, but this is where the four uh, choose three is coming from. So I'll write this on the side too. Cool. Um, okay, subsets. Uh, so in order to look at subsets, we're going to look at the all potential subsets of our um, a set. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an n element set S. So we know that the size of S is n elements. Um, and again, like I said, I want to look at all possible things. So how many options do I have? So if I take some set S, so we'll say this is the set A, B, X, Y from before, right? Um, well, I can choose to include this or not, right? So I can keep it in or I can take it out. Uh, same thing with this, right? I can either keep it in or I can take it out. Um, in or out. I'll just use words. Uh, same thing for this, right? I can choose to keep it in or out. And for Y, I can choose to keep it in or out. So for each of these options, I have two choices, right? And so the multiplication rule basically says, well, I should multiply these all together. There's four of these, so I get two to the four. Um, and so if you think about this generally, if I have n elements in my set and each one of them has two options, well, I'm just going to have two to the n different options altogether. So if I look at my example here, um, where I actually detail an example in more full and luscious detail. Uh, what we have is if I have the set AB, well, I can either take both of them out. So this you can think of as out, out. This you can think of as out, in. This you can think of as in, out. And then finally, you can think of this as in, in. Um, and you can think of these, like you notice how here, this looks like binary. So I, I actually did zero O's and um, I's, but they can also be out as zeros and ones. Um, and so you can actually think of this as binary and it's another way to see that uh, this is two to the N. Um, and so this, so what we're also going to do is I'm also going to set a notation because we will use this notation a lot. Uh, the set two S two to the S sorry. Uh, this is going to be the set of all subsets is the set uh, is the set of all subsets of s. So in other words, what I have is 2 to the s is equal to a such that a is a subset of s. So since we're working with sets a lot in probability, we're going to use this notation significantly. So it's something we should definitely know. Uh, okay, so we'll stop here. Uh, next up, we'll talk about odds. So we'll look at probability from a different lens.